Just like in the prior version of this very list, one that was also hugely helped by the wonderful folks at R Movie Details, it simply didn't matter how unbelievably insane or outrageous all of these particular movie details and moments were. Viewers still largely somehow didn't catch massively unexpected cameos and other brilliant details sitting right under their noses. So I'm Gareth, this is What Culture, and here are 10 more insane movie moments you won't believe you never spotted. Number 10. The Elephants Are Balancing on a Rather Familiar Ball in Aladdin Guy Ritchie's 2019 live-action remake of Aladdin brought with it Will Smith's take on the charismatic genie in the lamp that was once iconically played by the late, great Robin Williams. One of the most adored moments to go down in that original animated version of the feature involved Williams' blue legend unleashing a colourful rendition of the Friend Like Me tune, and fans were very much curious about what Smith himself would bring to such a well-known Disney classic. Whilst being well and truly distracted by the big blue magical figure bringing the showstopper to an end with a few splits alongside Mina Masood's titular hero though, many probably overlooked a rather cute easter egg being insanely balanced on by some CGI elephants in the background. Look closely at said balls somehow not being crushed by the giant mammals, and you'll probably just about spot that this is the very same blue and yellow ball with a red star on it, aka the Luxar ball, that has popped up in a ton of of Pixar projects over the years, including Toy Story, Up, The Incredibles, Inside Out, and more. And while Aladdin may not fall under the Disney Pixar animated banner, Richie and the House of Mouse still clearly wanted to salute the studio and unmistakable ball here in the most insane but easily missed way imaginable. Now what's your favourite Disney movie of the last decade? Was it Aladdin or something else? You let me know in the comment section down below, friends. Number 9. The inverted Nike logo in Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse's Darker Universe Without doubt one of the most gloriously detailed and gripping animated features released in the last decade, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse sequel Across the Spider-Verse is honestly the visual gift that just keeps on giving. It often feels like absolutely every frame is overflowing with easy to miss easter eggs and details just begging to be discovered by audiences. And that was definitely the case during the closing moments of the mesmerizing and hugely moving 2023 picture. As Miles Morales surprisingly finds himself in the Earth-42 dimension instead of his own, a quick look at that universe's skyline shows you just how much darker things really are in this world. This being the universe where Miles or anyone did not become Spider-Man, the city's crime levels are through the roof, and it appears a lot of the hope and positivity has been drained out of it. As seen in the fact the iconic Nike Just Do It slogan has been replaced by a far more negative Don't Do It one on a building in the background. It's such an insanely small but marvellous detail detail, and one that is easily not caught during even your first few watches. But once you do, it makes an already bleak universe feel that little bit more hopeless. Number 8. An easily missed shooting star shows the network arriving in the world's end. Before telling the invading big lamp known as the network to F off during Edgar Wright's final Cornetto trilogy flick known as The World's End, said alien entity lets Gary King know that they've helped connect the planet through technology over the last 23 years, confirming they've been on Earth for over two decades. But that was actually already secretly revealed very early on in the picture during the beer-soaked opening scene. That sequence which focuses on King and his pals attempting to complete the Golden Mile, a 12 pub crawl in the town of Newton Haven as youngsters ends with Gary sat on a hill watching the sunrise after a hell of a night out. And it's during that moment that you can actually spot a quite insane visual detail if you're looking closely enough. Basil mentions later on in the movie that when a shooting star shot across the sky on the night of the gang's original pub crawl, that was actually the network arriving on their planet. Keep an eye on the top left part of the sky as Gary sits on the hill as a youngster, and you'll absolutely see that very same shooting star crashing down to the earth for a second or two, all the way back in 1990, 23 years before Gary meets the network. Basil called it. Number 7. The Changing Lamp in Oppenheimer 
From a big lamp to a little lamp. A director known for his rather insane attention to detail, it won't come as too much of a surprise to hear that Christopher Nolan was added again during the making of the Oscar-winning biopic that was Oppenheimer. Though you likely weren't paying too much attention to the various objects in Lyle Johnson's office when J. Robert Oppenheimer is first seen in that location in the movie, a quick glance at the lamp in two scenes there, minutes apart, reveals something quite fascinating. Those items completely change between that first scene and the one where Oppenheimer meets Boris Pash a day later, subtly showing how the government had begun spying on the former by planting a recording device in this new lamp. Such an insane detail is so easily overlooked during a first watch of this massive epic. But with the words exchange in this office eventually being used as evidence against Oppenheimer during his intense security hearings, it does appear that this swiftly changing lamp had something to do with it. Number 6. Toy Story 2 contains some rather intriguing playthings in Al's Toy Barn. Disney Pixar's follow-up to the instantly iconic Toy Story saw Buzz Lightyear and the rest of the gang doing everything they could to find their pal Woody and bring him home after he was stolen by toy collector Al McGuigan. Their search eventually brought them to said Al's Toy Barn, a giant toy store. It's here when the team split up to find the titular chicken man who will lead them to their cowboy mate, and a quite mad detail you never spotted suddenly reveals itself. Rex and Mr. Potato Head wander down one specific aisle in the show shop, and a whole host of different toy boxes are visible on the shelves around them, with some of them being quite intriguing, while others are a little, let's say, uh, unexpected. Along with Pixar finding a way to sneak a Senorita Cactus reference into the scene, a character who was originally going to be a part of Woody's Roundup instead of Jesse, the team behind the picture also dropped what looks like a creepy and easily missed zombie cheerleader toy into the background here. For just $6.99, what a buy. Bargain. It would have likely been a very different film had these undead playthings broken free and hunted down our heroes. But who wouldn't pay to see a demented scenario involving Buzz zapping his way through a horde of zombie cheerleaders? I know I would. Cheers for checking out this video today. Hit that subscribe button down below for more what culture on your screen. Number 5. Dobby the Elf Gucci Model is visible in Chippendale Rescue Rangers. The return of animated legends Chip and Dale, known as 2022's Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers, boasted a ton of rather insane cameos, it must be said. But if the infamous ugly Sonic the Hedgehog popping up on screen for a few moments wasn't enough for you, there was actually another far more surreal appearance you likely didn't even clock during a first watch. As Chip wanders down the Hollywood Walk of Fame at one point, not only is a star earned by none other than SpongeBob SquarePants Squidward visible on the floor. Well earned, if you ask me. A quite ridiculous blink and you'll miss it Harry Potter cameo soon arrives on screen too. Whilst admitting that the incoming Batman vs. E.T. flick actually looks pretty good, a somewhat blurred poster in the background seemingly shows off a post-Potter series Dobby the Elf now modelling for Gucci. Because not only is he a free elf, it turns out he's a damn stylish one as well. What a world, eh? Number 4. Gru has some insane relatives in his Despicable Me family tree. If it hadn't already been made clear in this list, the world of animation can often be a bit of a mad one. And sure enough, an animated classic about a supervillain trying to steal the moon contained its fair share of insane moments too. However, there is one quite nutty detail in that first Despicable Me feature that flew under just about everyone's radars. And it could be found during the scene when Gru checks out his family tree, before glancing down at the delightful additional family members scribbled onto the wall by his adopted daughters a quick pause of the screen on that family tree reveals a whole host of utterly insane relatives. Along with the Gru family containing a great many different races and seemingly villainous characters, including pirates and creepy scientists, it also boasts a rather furry member, with it looking like one of Gru's ancestors was actually a werewolf called Marcel. In other words, it seems Gru genuinely does have that dog in him, or wolf in him, or something, whatever. Number 3. A Mojo Jojo Cameo That Connects to Ghostface in Scream 6 
As the likes of Tara Carpenter and the rest of the group head down into the subway to catch a train to the theatre during 2023's latest slice of Ghostface slasher chaos, they pass a number of folks in fancy dress in Scream 6. However, there's actually one costume here that sits as a pretty insane detail that very few likely spotted when they first took in this hit horror sequel. You see, one of the people wandering around New York here was actually seemingly sporting a Mojo Jojo costume of all things. You know, the evil genius seen trying to destroy the Powerpuff Girls during that classic cartoon series. Far from being just a cute little nod to a Cartoon Network show, this was actually a surprising easter egg of sorts. The same bloke who voiced Mojo Jojo in the Powerpuff Girls, Roger L. Jackson, was also the voice of the original Ghostface in that first movie in 1996, and has voiced the character in every subsequent Scream entry. So this Mojo cameo was seemingly an insanely subtle way of saluting the long time voice of the franchise's iconic killer under everyone's noses. Number 2. A Visible Shard in Children of Men Even Though It Hadn't Been Built Yet Releasing in 2006, dystopian thriller Children of Men told the story of a world where the human race had been shockingly infertile for two decades, and viewers were thrust right into this rather bleak and dangerous year of 2027 early on. As Theo Farron picks up a coffee after discovering the youngest person alive had just been murdered, he's then very nearly blown to pieces on the streets of London. But if you actually look closely at the skyline in the moments just before that sudden explosion, you'll notice a particularly insane detail added into this opening stretch. Despite construction on the building only beginning in 2009, three years after this film released, the tallest building in the United Kingdom, The Shard, is very much visible in the distance here. It was remarkably thrown into the scene via CGI, with early architectural drawings for the unmistakable building being used to digitally recreate the tower for this moment, set 18 years after work first began on it. That is some rather insane attention to detail there from the great Alfonso Curon and helps make this particular version of the future feel that little more realistic. And number one, Shaggy finds his fans in Scooby Doo 2 Monsters Unleashed by Smelling Weed. It's definitely hinted at on a number of occasions during the first live-action Scooby-Doo movie that the titular mutt's best pal Shaggy was a big ol' fan of the marijuana, and that 2002 family film's follow-up Scooby-Doo 2 Monsters Unleashed once again offered a few easily missed details that suggest Shaggy knows a thing or two about getting high. Not long after Mystery Inc. arrived to open an exhibition focusing on the many mysteries they'd solved in the past, the laid-back Shaggy walks down the red carpet before being stopped in his tracks by what seems to be a familiar smell. As a very subtle cloud of smoke departs, he soon spots the group of shaggy stands cheering him on nearby and quickly starts throwing out totally awesome high fives. It's pretty clear what's being suggested here, and it's a quite insane detail. One you won't believe you overlooked for so long that was somehow snuck into a big screen adaptation of a family friendly cartoon. And the hiding in plain sight we jokes seemingly don't stop there either. As many a Scooby Doo die hard as spotted over the years, it very much looks like Scoob's mate is dressed up as a blunt here too. Or maybe this was nothing more than an innocent suit version of Shaggy's typical green and brown costume, eh? You can come to your own conclusion on that.